Our series, 400 Years, The Vestiges of Slavery in Cleveland, continues tonight with a look at history and Cleveland's role in the Underground Railroad. Yeah, digital journalist Randy Buffington and I teamed up and explored the city that was codenamed Hope. When I say the word hope to you, what do you think of? Stories. Tons and tons of stories. Just having that willpower to just keep moving forward. One incredible story was the descendants of a freedom seeker that you found. It was, it was crazy. If I reached out to a family uh, of a former slave that settled here in the city years ago, and uh, they couldn't be more proud of the legacy he left behind. Yeah. You saw the email from me that I, I reached out and wanted to learn more. What were your thoughts then? I was like, oh my, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> but then I'm like, I just like, wow, this is pretty cool. Just makes me proud yeah. that he's my great, great, great grandfather. All I had was his name. I just had his name, his wife's name, and I kind of went from there searching for stuff. Obituaries, um, death records anything I could find to piece things together. The search hasn't stopped. Pam Marison started digging for her family tree over two decades ago, and what she found still amazes her. We were told that we were Indian. So when I found that, then I just started digging a little more, and then I found that he was actually an escaped slave. That man's name was Madison Tilly. Originally born in the South, he escaped slavery and settled in Cleveland around 1837. After just three years, he was prospering in the Haymarket District in what is now downtown Cleveland. He worked as a boatman and a teamster, owned property, and used those assets to set his children up for life. I think there was ten. Ten total. Uh -huh. Okay. That's a huge family. <laughs> oh yeah. With the help of DNA testing, Pam has traced her family tree back for generations, from Madison down to his offspring. I have a photo of his daughter Delia, which was my great-great-grandmother. I have a photo of his son, Jim, and his wife, Mary. I come to the cemetery, like I said, at, at least once every two years, probably. It was Erie Street Cemetery where Tilly was laid to rest. When he died, he was one of the wealthiest African Americans in the city, with property estimated around 30K. You adjust that to now, and you're looking at a smooth $750,000. I know, not have that for a man who couldn't read or write. To see that he was a slave, and that he became so well off years later, um, it, just, it just amazes me. Power move after power move, he decided to dabble in politics. Here he is listed as a local delegate at the 1854 National Immigration Convention. His sons kept fighting for freedom a few years later. One of his sons and his son-in-law was in the Civil War. They both came home and made a home. Several of his kids picked up where he left off, working in construction on buildings downtown that still stand today. If he was here right now, mm -hmm. what would you say to him? That I'm proud of him, and I'm proud to be his great, great, great granddaughter. That's what it's all about, right? I can't believe you <laughs> found that. It was incredible. It was yeah. intense, man. It was crazy. But one thing I found out is it wasn't just a few families. Yeah. I spoke to a researcher, actually, in University Circle, of all places, who said Cleveland had a major role in the Underground Railroad. In this area in particular, there was a lot of anti-slavery sentiments, helping freedom seekers make their way to, uh, to Canada and beyond. I'm meeting researcher Joe Wickens in the heart of University Circle, a thriving area now that was far different in the mid-1800s. This was sort of like a farmland. When freedom seekers would make it to a farm that was friendly to them, they would work for a couple days and earn their room and board before they would move on. just weren't keeping those records, weren't broadcasting out, really weren't interested in, in, in um, outwardly projecting that they were that, that they were helping people um, do that in some cases because, you know, fear of punishment, uh, imprisonment, fines. So um, in terms of, it had to be a guess, it had to be an estimation. Regardless of the actual number, if as a freedom seeker you found Cleveland, then you found hope. If you got to hear 
As a freedom seeker, you know, this was a, there was there was a, this was a turning point. If you guys want more information on the Underground Railroad, check out our full story on Cleveland19.com. What an amazing job you and Randy did to be able to find people's history. It's find just the so... descendants, right? Isn't that amazing? Wow! And I love that Cleveland was codenamed I Hope. I know. Like, how symbolic. How awesome. I know. Yeah. Wow. Great job. Great job.